Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 19 of the Rookies podcast. My name is Tyler Matute. And my name is Hartley McCallum. And on today's episode, we'll be discussing the highly anticipated yet controversial topic that is the 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games set to start this Friday in Tokyo. Here to provide some insight into the event is Paralympian and bronze medalist from Canada's 2014 men's ice sledge hockey team, Anthony Gale. Anthony was named to Canada's national sledge hockey team in 2010, and at the age of 17, he was the youngest player representing the team that year. Since then, he's gone on to represent Canada at the national and international level. So, Anthony, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Rookies podcast. We're excited to get into today's topic, so let's get started. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, thank you so much, Anthony, for being here with us today. So, we first wanted to get to know you a little bit more, just about you and your story as a Paralympian and simply as a fan of, of sport. What was it about sledge hockey that made you want to pursue the sport professionally? And how has your journey as an athlete led you to where you are today? Yeah, I mean, um, good question. I mean, it sounds cliche, but just growing up in Canada, um, I was always around hockey. My dad played hockey. Um, so I used to go watch him play as a, as a little guy. And my parents were kind of notified that there was a, an adaptive sport as close to hockey uh, as I had seen previously it was just amazing. And that was right away. It was the closest thing. And, and once I found out there was a national team, it was just on my bucket. Yeah, for sure. It's always great to hear those stories. I know a lot of us dream of doing something athletically as a kid, same with myself. I was a big soccer guy, but it's always nice to see some success stories and hear about the journey and how you got there. So kind of along those lines, I wanted to touch upon where things are for you now in terms of an athletic perspective, uh, do you still train? Are you retired from the game or where do you stand right now with that? I actually haven't played um, or been in my sled in like five or six years. So um, I, I'm not officially retired, I guess, but I, I don't plan on going back anytime soon. And at least to that level, a few of my buddies and I were talking about uh, just going out and playing like some shinny ice and just to get, get more active and stuff. But uh, other than that, no, it's I pretend like I, I use my home gym. Yeah, I feel you on that one, Anthony. I, I also grew up playing high level hockey. I just the regular ice hockey, of course. And, um, you know, I haven't been on my skates in over two years now. So I definitely miss the sport, but just play it for fun on the side. Um, transitioning into that, what was it about sports business that made you want to pursue it as a career? Would you ever consider working for, you know, Canada's Olympic Committee? Um, I mean, to answer the first part of the question, I think it was especially when I got to, to the national team and uh, I was playing for Canada and seeing how much was put into tournaments and, and everything and, and we just show up. So I think for me personally, I, I wanted to see the business side of sport um, and that's what kind of drew me to, to going to school for it. Um, <clears throat> in terms of working in sport, I mean, it is like I, I did a, an internship with Cosmos um, on the, the Brampton Beast and uh, it was it was great it was a lot of fun and um but i think it's a little too fast paced for me personally and i'm glad i had the opportunity to to see the effort that goes into it and i respect anybody and everybody that goes into it and, and wants to pursue it um but for me i like i had a part-time job throughout school and everything in the financial industry and uh that's currently what i'm doing now and i'm working from home so it's it's nice like that yeah, it's always nice to, you know, I think everyone kind of has that moment, like you said, where something happens and it goes from just playing sports to being interested in in what goes on behind the scenes. And then me and Harley are just in the beginning of our career. So like you said, you know, maybe the finances side of it kind of appealed more to you and then you took a different career path. But we'll see where that takes us. Harley and I are both pretty, pretty early on here, but we'll see where that goes. Um, I kind of want to switch gears a little bit here and take it back to last year where everything seemingly kind of happened in the blink of an eye. And with the pandemic, we were like, okay, we got to be cautious and just watch out. And then in a matter of weeks, it felt like the world kind of shut down. Um, so what was your initial reaction when you heard that the Olympic and Paralympic games were going to be postponed? Were you surprised, shocked? Did you see it coming? Um, I mean, personally, I, I, I didn't even consider that, uh, especially when, like when it all happened, like 
aside from the NBA and the NHL and, and all like the major league sports in, in North America shutting down within a few days of each other, it was kind of nuts and didn't know what to think. Um, so I, I honestly wasn't even thinking that far ahead. Um, but then as it, as it kept progressing and I don't know if progressing is the right word, but now <clears throat> looking back, it, it's kind of crazy that, that we are still in it. Um, and I, I like to no fault of, of anything. I'm not political or anything like that, but it's, it is what it is. And, and the way I, I kind of think and, and how I was as a hockey player and how I go in life now and whatever path I'm on, it's, you just got to go with the flow. Um, and, and there's not really much you can do. And, and at the end of the day, a lot of them, yes, they're amateur athletes, but they're professional in some of the sports that they compete in because there aren't leagues. Um, so yes, they are professional athletes and, and they'll adapt. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, been a shock to many, but obviously needed to be done considering the health risks involved and the uncertainty of this new virus that has taken over the world. Uh, fast forward one year, though, we're about to watch these athletes compete on the world stage. So how do you feel about the committee's decision to move, move forward with these games this summer? Do you feel like it's too early? Do you feel like it's good timing? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I Again, personally, uh, I like the decision. It's like we're a little bit further behind than where they are in Europe and, and Asia and stuff. So um, I think it's I think it is the right time. I mean, again, with all the, all the Delta variant, whatever that's out there um all the other major leagues have been able to operate in a bubble format and the olympics and the paralympics are no different they were they're they've always operated in a, in a bubble format so the athletes are going to be protected on their own within the bubble i know that there's been quite a few cases that are getting linked now but if everything is going smoothly in terms of their travel and everything, if it's caught early, like, I don't know what that, what that looks like for that athlete, but um, at least it, it stops it dead in its tracks before it can run rampant within the, the athlete village. No. Yeah. I like what you said, you know, that other leagues and sports have kind of found a way to adapt and listen, it's been a, it's been a difficult year for everyone. So these people hosting the events and the committees, it's no different. I'm sure they've put, lots and lots of time and planning into the right health and safety protocols to, you know, execute the event as safe as you can be while still navigating through a pandemic. So it, it, it's going to look a little bit different. Of course, we're not going to see it in the traditional way that we do. Um, protocols and restrictions have kind of made it so that the athletes kind of get there, um, partake in their event once they're done, kind of wrap up, stick in their bubble with their immediate coaches, teammates and stuff like that. So along those lines, I kind of want to ask, do you think as an athlete, those restrictions might uh, affect their performance, especially when it comes to training and staying mentally prepared? Um, and then again, in your opinion, what can an athlete do to stay healthy and mentally prepared throughout that time um, while they're in that kind of bubble format? Yeah, I mean, when I had the opportunity to go in 2014, I mean, obviously there's very heavy security. Um, and, and something like this was not present, obviously, and I wouldn't know what those restrictions obviously look like. But within that bubble, I think that they're, everything outside of it doesn't really matter, in my opinion. I think if they can get into that right mindset, um, like you said, being mentally strong and, and being overall healthy um, starts with the mindset. Um, and I think that having less of that outside noise could help some athletes exceed, I guess would be the way it were, or succeed. Yeah, that's definitely great advice. Obviously it's mind over matter. That's the right outlook to have considering these times. And I'll also, I'm sure there's so many regimens that go on behind the scenes that athletes do to get ready to compete at such a high level that the audience doesn't even realize what's going on behind those scenes. Speaking of training, are there any preparations that might differ between Olympians and versus the Paralympians? How do you think this will impact the athletes participating in those particular events? Um, again, with my with my experience in, in the Paralympic Games, um, I mean, I can only I can really only imagine what it would be for me, and and the guys that I know that are on the team. Um, on that team Canada right now. And, but at least everybody would have to get to a gym at some point. We all know how hard that's been. And 
I think now everybody has more home gym equipment than ever, but there's only so much you can do in a, in your own home or in your apartment or in your bedroom or whatever the case is. And a lot, a lot of the athletes aren't making that the big bucks that we see in the NHL or the NBA. So they've got to make do with what they have. So again, I, I think that they are, they are all professionals and they know how hard they've worked in the years prior um, to just the last year. And they know, and they, I would assume at least they'd have the, the resources to, to still get them in prime shape and, and ready to compete. Yeah, I like what you said there, that these, these athletes prepare their entire lives for this moment, and you never know when you're going to get it again. And I feel like for the most part, maybe some have more resources than others, but everyone's been dealing with the pandemic. So finding whatever way you can to be prepared for this game, I'm sure that's what they would have done. Um, kind of staying along that topic, another interesting dynamic that we've seen over the past year is sporting venues being empty. And uh, over the past year, we've seen sports operate with little to no fans. Um, but do you think in such a large scale event like the Olympics and Paralympics, they only happen every couple of years. Do you think we're going to feel that a bit more um, from an athlete's perspective being at the game or from us watching it? What are your thoughts on that? I, again, I would say it's mind over matter or and all that kind of stuff, because, again, they would adapt. And yes, when I had the opportunity to play in Sochi, it was the biggest crowd I've ever played in in front of. Um, so obviously, yeah, unfortunately that you do miss that, that excitement and, and the noise. And so yes, it can play a part. Um, but again, mind over matter. If you can, if you can put that at the back, nothing else matters. Yeah. That's a great way to approach it. The mind over matter mentality, making sure you're able to adapt in those situations to come out on top is huge. Um, obviously like with those empty stadiums going on across many leagues professionally and, you know, within basketball, soccer, baseball, we're seeing everything empty for the past year. Um, what are your thoughts on some athletes who have perhaps decided to opt out of the games this summer and have just made that call to forfeit their opportunity to attend the Olympics? I mean, it's obviously to each their own and, and I don't imagine that would be an easy decision to make. Uh, we saw it in, in the NHL where guys were pulling out of, of going to the first bubble um, of the playoffs. And it was, nobody knew what was going to happen. Like we didn't know what was ahead. And I still think that that's, that's still true. And to a certain extent, so excuse me, it would be a hard decision to make. Yeah. Like you said, other league experienced this too with opt outs I've seen in many leagues and I think it's important, like, like you said, everyone can make their own decision and certainly probably a lot of time went into it. Um, but ultimately, some people probably decided this one might not be the one for me. And then conversely, it kind of leads to my next question. There may have been some athletes who might consider Tokyo 2020 as maybe their final chance at an Olympic title. So do you think that might have been going through the mindset of some people like, you know, yeah, there's risks, but maybe this might be the last time I have to compete at this event that I've worked my whole life for? Do you think that's kind of the mindset some athletes may have had as well? Absolutely. Um, I mean, now it's looking back and obviously I'm from the outside now. And if I had the opportunity, I, I don't think I would have given it up. And, and that's not to say I'm judging anybody that would. And again, it, it would be such a hard decision because it's, it's, you're not just making it for you. You've got to think of the people around you. And so it's, I don't, again, like I said, I don't imagine it being an easy, any, an easy decision, but um, yeah, I, I, I feel for those, for those athletes for sure. Yeah. I'm sure many athletes were obviously faced with this crazy dilemma of choosing their lifelong dream that they've been working so hard for versus taking care of their friends and family by, you know, making that call. Like you said, is that true? Like if you were in their shoes, would you forfeit your opportunity at the games if you were planning on retiring shortly? Uh, again, I, I think now it's easy for me to say no, but I, I would not have given it up. But again, I, I, I don't think it's easy for me to put myself in that, in that mindset or in that, that place and think about it because it's, I've had so many emotions over the last year and a bit with what we've gone through with 
being in lockdowns all the time and, and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's for me, I, I, I'd, I'd like to say that I would not have given up on that chance, but I don't, I don't know. I like the way you put it. Like I was thinking the exact same thing. Like you, it's easy to say I wouldn't, or I would, but unless you're actually in those shoes, it's tough because you're actually analyzing the true impact of what, what it means to you, what it means to everyone around you. And like you said, it's not just a decision for one individual person. There's a huge amount of thinking that goes into family, teammates and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, switching gears a little bit, I think it's going to be interesting in my perspective to see the prolonged impact that the pandemic has on these big events like the Olympics. So with that being said, do you think the pandemic will have a lasting impact on the Olympic games in the future, especially with the 2022 winter Olympics coming up? What do you kind of hope to see differently at th that event that we're going to maybe not see at this event? Um, no, I think, like, I think the main thing is we want to see fans again um, and being in Toronto and, or close to Toronto, I'm happy the Jays are coming back and it's going to be fun to see them with some fans in the building and done with all the, the Buffalo fans. I think, I think it's going to be, it's going to be fun to go to events like the, like that. Um, once we are ahead of this thing again and, and we can go back to quote unquote normal. Yeah, those are definitely great points. I myself am very hopeful that once, you know, the pandemic passes, we'll be able to see those athletes and the world be fully immersed in the Olympic experience. And then beyond Olympics, just in professional sports, we all know how powerful the world of sport is and how they can bring together communities. So on a lighter note, is there any particular event this summer that you're really looking forward to watching? Um, well, for me, I. I do know a few people personally um, that are competing that I, I grew up with uh, playing sludge hockey and, and when I played, uh, when I participated in um, wheelchair racing as well. Um, so I'll definitely be watching the Paralympics, uh, specifically the throwing uh, to watch Renee Fussell. So if you don't know who she is, definitely check her out. She's breaking records right now and um, she's only 20, five or something like that. So um, yeah, that's who I'll be watching. That's awesome. I myself have always enjoyed watching, you know, gymnastics, track. It's just crazy how these athletes are so strong and they make these difficult performances just look so effortless. Um, what about you, Tyler? Yeah, for sure. Those are some great picks and I'll definitely be tuning into both of those now as well. Um, personally, what I'm looking forward to is the Canadian women's national soccer team. I know I mentioned earlier, I was a soccer guy, grew up playing, watching. And around the time that I was in high school, I want to say they uh, won the bronze medal at the past summer games. And it was like almost out of nowhere, they came up and they became this dominant team uh, in, in the world in a sport dominated traditionally by European South American teams. And I've kept in, kept up tabs with them and they look to have a very good team. A lot of young and up and coming talent mixed with a nice blend of veteran experience. So I think they're really in a good position to make a run here for the gold medal, maybe bring it home for us. So I'll definitely be paying attention to them this summer. And just to kind of, you know, end on a nice high note here as well, we wanted to ask you another fun type of question as we wrap up. Um, are there any particular memories from your time at the Paralympics, maybe one or two that stand out? I know the bronze medal is probably number one up there, but anything else you can kind of dive into of, some really great experiences you had? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, obviously. Yeah, like you said, I mean, I think the coolest thing for me was the opening ceremonies. Um, I've never experienced something like that. And, and being in the middle of it, like obviously watching on TV, every time I watch it, I get goosebumps before I, before I even had the opportunity to go. Um, and now every time I watch it, I'm like, that is so cool that I had the opportunity to walk through that tunnel. And um, so it's, it's just exhilarating. And then you get no sleep and then like we had to play the next day at noon. So um, it's, yeah, it, I can't even explain it. It's just, it's, it puts you on such a high. That's so awesome to see how you keep those memories with you for the rest of your life. 
Um, obviously, it's such a huge accomplishment to represent your country like that. For our viewers, though, uh, you said you brought your medal with you. I did, yeah. Yeah, let's take a look. <laughs> I know, I know we're virtual, but I still think that's the closest I've ever been to one of those guys. So <laughs> it's amazing even through the computer screen. This one's a little bit better because we actually won the tournament this time. So I have one of these from 2013 when we beat Team USA in the uh, uh, World Championships in Goyang City, South Korea. That's so awesome. Thank you so much for you know sharing those pieces of a really big metal equipment there with us. Huge yeah, accomplishments on your end. Um, just wrapping up the podcast here, do you have any like final comments that you want to share with uh, our viewers? And uh, where can people find you if they want to connect with you online? Uh, yeah, I'm just on Twitter at Anthony underscore Gale nine. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you, Anthony, so much uh, for being able to join us today, talk about the Olympics, the Paralympics, and kind of everything surrounding that. It's been a really awesome discussion, and we all look forward to seeing how the events turn out, and hopefully everyone can stay safe and healthy, and we get to see the best athletes in the world competing at the biggest stage and really enjoy that. Definitely. Yeah, thank you once again, Anthony, and to all of our listeners at home. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Rookies Podcast, and we'll see you all next week. Mm -hmm.